So today I thought I'd uh, come and shoot some 4x5 film on this 4x5 large format camera and I've come down the farm and I've come here quite a lot but I've never actually bought the 4x5 camera down here and I've got four in plane. I can't talk to you while there's a plane going over. I can't even myself think. F-I-N-K. Well go on, bugger off. Don't turn back round this way, Mr. Bloody Pilot. Oh look at me, I'm a pilot. I'm in my plane. So today I thought I'd uh, come out and take some pictures of the farm and I've bought my large format camera, 4x5 camera. I've been to the farm quite a lot to take pictures over the past. You guys have seen it. It's only a little five minute walk away from me. But I've never bought a 4x5 down here before and taken any shots. Shut up, you lamb, whatever you are. I've never come down here before and taken 4x5 shots. So I've only got four sheets of film and I thought it'd be nice to get some photographs of the exterior of the farm. Just four shots. Uh, in fact, three shots. One of them I'm going to use uh, for a development test when I get back uh, because I'm using Kodak TXP 320 film, which is pretty much a Tri-X film at 320, but they reckon it's the professional version. They don't do this version of film in 35mm or 120. They only do it in sheet, and I don't know why. So I've never used it before, but uh, I've got 10 sheets of the stuff to try out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get this camera set up. And I quite enjoy shooting 4x5. It's a nice slow format to shoot. If I've got 35mm, I'll just go off and bomb, 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 bomb. 120 a little bit slow, but 4x5, I'm slower still. And some people say, what's the point? You know, I've had comments before in the past saying, what's the point in shooting large format? What a load of old faffing about getting under the cover and trying to get your composition and stuff. Well, I guess some people enjoy it and some people... Maybe you've never tried it, I don't know. I enjoy it. So here it is, the Intrepid 4x5. It's a bit fiddly to get set up, but once it's set up, you're on a roll. It's probably the cheapest way to get into large format. These cameras are about 200, 250 quid, maybe even cheaper if you can get them used. And I'm still only scratching the surface with 4x5 photography. I enjoy it. I'm getting used to it professionally or getting maybe the best out of it. Maybe not, but fundamentally it's great to shoot. And the lens I'm going to be using is a 90 millimeter lens, which is wide. So probably equivalent to what, 28 mil on a 35 mil camera. And this lens I've got is a Schneider Kruznach. <laughs> you can never say it right. Uh, 90 millimeter. F 5.6. That's portrait. I'm going to want to shoot landscapes. I'm going to flip that round into the landscape position, like so. Uh, get it all squared up and take me shots. And in my bag, I've got obviously the Superman cape that goes over the top. I've got my light meter and also a tape measure in case I want to get any closer and measure the uh, bellows extension. But I'm just going to be shooting wide today, so I doubt if I need that. And inside here, I've got these sheets of film. And this is a horse I took a picture of the other day on 35mm. Hello, sweetie. I don't know what her name is. I think it's probably Daisy or something like that. She's a gorgeous horse. Hello. And I'm safe because I'm behind. She's behind an electric fence. She's got flies on her. Come here, girl. Hello. Hello. She's beautiful, isn't she? I don't know how old she is. And over here they've got all the sheep and they've just had some lambs. This is lambing season. So the farmer's got all their lambs in these cages. Hello. These lambs got much bigger. The other day they was really tiny. They didn't half grow quick. And one thing I found out about lambs, maybe there's some farmers watching this might be able to tell me, but the farmers here said that uh, if the lamb's in trouble, it won't fight for its life when it's born. It'll just give up and die. And there's quite a few lambs over there in a, in a little wheelbarrow. That have, um, that have popped off. 
So there's two stupid things that I've done today and forgot to bring with me. One is my glasses so I can see the ground glass. That's not so important because I'm going to be shooting wide, but I'm going to use my phone to try and get uh, focus on the back screen here. And I've also forgot my cable release, but that's okay because I'm not going to be shooting anything that's going to give any camera wobble. A little tiny shutter switch on the side of the lens there. So um, I should be okay without a cable release, but I'm a little bit gutted that I forgot those two and didn't put them in my bag. And I've also bought out my Siconic light meter with me. I'm going to use this in spot metering mode. So once I've got my scene sorted out, I'm going to take a measurement of spot reading off of uh, the darker part of the area that I want a bit of detail in, the shadow part. And of course, that's going to return a value of middle grey. If I dull that into the lens and take the photograph, then everything's going to be overexposed. I don't want that. I'm just going to come a couple of stops under uh, from what the meter tells me. So if it says 5.6, I'm going to shoot at f11. Pretty simple. And then I'm going to use one of these exposed sheets to just test my development later on. Um, develop normally and see if I need to over or under develop uh, for the pictures that I want. So I've got four, four shots to take. Right, I can't see bugger all. Why didn't I bring my glasses? On the back of the ground glass, that's the exposure I've got. I think it's in focus. I'm having trouble without my glasses. I don't think it is in focus. Just focusing in now. I have to use my phone to get a focus on it. Oh, so it took me quite a while to get that in focus. I've got my holder here, I've got number one, number two, so let's put it into number one. Easy as that. So the sheet of film is now ready to be exposed. I've uh, I did have the lens open for focusing, now I've shut the lens, obviously if I pull the dark slide out with that lens open I'm buggered. But uh, should be alright, let's do some metering. So I'm reckoning the dark part that I went in detail is at the bottom there where the grass is, bottom of the barn, just near that hubcap. You're wondering why I haven't moved that hubcap, I'm leaving it there. It's there at the time I took the picture, so I'm going to leave it. Um, you know, 100 years time people will go, what's that strange thing? So I'm going to say, oh, that was hubcap mate, for people's wheels. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. And I'm shooting this film at 200, so I've set 200 ISO uh, into, the, in, into the meter. Just going to overexpose it slightly from the box speed. I don't know, I haven't tried it before, so it's just testing out for me. Um, and I want to shoot at 1 25th of a second, which is giving me F8. And don't forget, that's going to be middle grey. I don't want that part to be middle grey, so I'm just going to come down a couple of stops. That's going to be, what, 11 and a half, 11 and a half. And uh, a little bit of bellows extension, should be too much. F11, 1 25th of a second. All tickety-boo. Clock the shutter, dark slide out. The car coming, wait for this car, and I'll take me shot. I'll take me dark slide out in the last minute. Dark slide out, there's the shutter there, just take that, done. Dark slide back in the other way around. So that's an exposed piece of film. So that's the first shot taken. Uh, all I need to do now is just mooch around and see what other compositions that I want. Um, later on, I'm gonna just make a contact print of that negative. I'm not gonna blow it up. I'm just gonna do a contact print of it and see how it comes out. I'll show you that later on in the dark room. So this time I've just metered up. I'm going into portrait mode. So let's put the second sheet of film in. Then it goes. And I'll meter that uh, when the sun's gone in, I don't want the sun out, it's gonna be too contrasty. So when the sun's gone in, I can shoot again at F11, 1 25th of a second. Slide out, take the photo. Slide back in. Done. Easy as that, he says. Yeah, remember when I used to be scared of cows? Look, I'm a bit more brave now. Well, they've got a snotty nose, though. Hello, mate. Oh, shit. Maybe not.
I've got one more shot left, well, one more sheet left. I've shot three, this will be the third sheet. I've got one more sheet that I'm gonna use just for my development uh, later on. So I don't screw up the other three sheets. But uh, all I've got now is just this barn here. The way I've composed it, I've got the gate in and the barn and a little bit of the sky. You can see a little bit of cloud up there. So that old broken barn. So let's see how this comes out. Now this scene is, seems to be a lot lighter. That barn door there, or that barn uh, woodwork. I'm just doing a meter on it. It's giving me F16 at 1 25th of a second straight on that wood. And I don't want that to be too dark, obviously. F16, that's going to give me middle grey, so I don't want it middle grey either. So I'm just going to go one stop. So F22, um, I reckon that might be OK. Let's do a quick incident reading on it, just to please myself. So the whole incident is giving me F16. Uh, F16.8, so F22, pretty much where I thought I might be. So this is sheet number three going in the camera. In it goes. F22, 125th of a second. Cock the shutter. Dark slide. Out, take the shot. Done. Dark slide back in the other way around. Lock it off, lovely. And I'll put this straight back in my bag because I don't want any light, if there's any light leaks or whatever going on there, at least I'm leaving nothing to chance. I'll put it straight back in my bag. So this last, last sheet of film is on this old tractor here. The trouble is I've got some of this highlight going on where the sun's coming out and it's gone dark in there. So I'm waiting for the sun to go in. But I don't want my sheet of film to be exposed too long at the back here to the sun, so I'll just put my camera sheet over it, like so, uh, just to protect the uh, film holder from that bright sun at the moment. As soon as that sun dies, I'll take the shot. So I've just looked up, there's no clouds. Look, you see the sun's belting off my bald head, look. <laughs> I'm just gonna take the shot anyway. It's only my test piece of film, I don't want to. <laughs> I've decided to change composition and come away from the sunlight. It's too bright. Uh, so what have we got here? 5.6. I don't want to shoot at 5.6. One thirtieth of a second at f11. Do you reckon I can hold that shutter for one thirtieth of a second? Should be all right. F11. One thirtieth of a second. We'll soon see, eh? And goes the sheet of film. And this is only the test film anyway that I'm going to develop and see what I need to do with the others. Cock the shutter, that's already cocked. Out comes the film. Take a shot, one thirtieth of a second. Done. That's it, that's four sheets of film, all exposed. Number four is going to be my test piece of film. So all I need to do now is pack all my gear away, say ta to the cows and the horse, get back and have a little play around with the development. So it's taken me about half an hour to get these photographs. Um, and I've enjoyed it, you know, just playing around and just taking my time. I'm out over the farm, listening to the cows and the planes. Um, I've lost my lens cap though. Where's my lens cap, where's my lens cap? I've enjoyed myself. I could have come down here with 35 mil or 120 and burst off a load of shots, but I've done that so many times. So I just thought I'd come down and take a few on large format for a change. So I'm in the dark room now, ready to make some contact prints. I'll show you how I do that. It's very easy and also show you how to put it in a frame at the end as well. And I've developed those sheets of film in 510 Pyro and also I fixed it with a new fixer that's out on the market just recently which is Zone Imaging's Eco Fixer. So I'll put a link in the description to that al new alkaline fixer from James Lane at Zone Imaging. Check it out, give him some support, put a link in the description if you want to try out his new fixer that, uh, that he's bringing out this week. So I developed the negatives in 510 Pyro from Zone Imaging and here they are here. This little tiny device I got from Bit by Bit Photo, a guy called Tim Soderstrom uh, in Texas. Little tiny drying device there for your four by five negs, really handy. Takes four negatives, as you can see there. And this is the first negative that I developed, the tractor. You can see that light leak at the top there. Um, you could see in a video that I was covering 
the, the, uh, the film holders with me dark cloth. But obviously, somehow it got to it. So I'll have to investigate that holder anyway, just to make sure it isn't damaged at all. But uh, that was developed in 510 Pyro. Wasn't quite sure of the times. I did actually speak to James Lane about it, and he wasn't sure either. So um, I ended up going for... I think it was a 16 minute semi stand and when I got the negative out it looked quite nice I just felt like it could do with another couple of minutes and that's how I developed the rest of the negatives but I was quite happy with this and that was the first negative there the barn a little bit overexposed I felt that one but I've still got detail in the sky it might not seem it on the video here um, but I could just see some detail in the sky so that's very printable that one and then the second shot that I took again you can just see the detail in the sky there um, of the main barn. These barns are like um, hundreds of years old. I think that was around King Henry VIII time when they were built. Not the best angle, but you notice there was a car sitting near the farmyard, um, which I didn't know whose it was, so I couldn't move it. So I just tried to get angles, especially this one where it was close up, so I didn't get the car in. And where I didn't have my glasses, I just slightly, I couldn't get the, um, the camera set up properly. The roof is just slightly out of focus, but everything else is in focus, so I was quite happy uh, with me focusing. I just wish I had my glasses, you know, so I could focus properly, um, but I didn't. That I took was of that old uh, that old barn, you can see it there. Got no detail at all going on inside, um, but it's still come out as a nice exposure. And this is what I developed the nigs in, inside this uh, Spearman developing tank here. It takes up to four sheets. And inside you've got these little trays here, these little racks that take two sheets each so pretty simple um, developing system so making a contact print of these is quite easy you can use a lamp which I've showed before in my videos I'll put a link to the description of that if you want to uh, be interested in making these contact prints without an enlarger but I'm using my enlarger and I'm just using this simple contact print glass that I made myself just some matte board and a piece of glass on top all I've got to do is make sure this is dust free and clean and then make me contact print I'll show you how I do it so I'm not going to do the normal way of making a contact print, of uh, checking the density of the film, etc. I'm just literally going to go for a print. So I'm going to be doing a normal test strip um, on this sheet of film and see what the best exposure times are. And it will come out looking like a contact print once I've done it. So I've got the head of my larger right up high. So it's covering the whole area where I'm making a contact print. And I uh, just need to pull the aperture down a bit. What's that, 5.6? And I've already cut some paper to fit the contact print there using um, nine and a half by 12 inch paper. We just put the paper down like so. Contact print on top where I want it to print onto the paper. Emulsion side down. Try and get it as straight as I can, but I'm going to trim it up anyway. Like so. Give the glass a little clean over the top and then just do a normal test strip using a piece of card increments of two seconds see what comes out the best three seconds I'm gonna go for sorry that's three seconds there six nine twelve Fifteen. So we've got a fifteen second exposure of increments of three seconds. In goes my test strip. Like I said, you, you don't have to use any larger to do this. You can just use lamps. Um, and I've got a video on that. I'll put a link in the description. It's quite easy to do. Uh, and I've just got three chemicals, which is a paper developer, stop bath, and a fixer. coming through nice paper goes into the stop bath now stop the development from here it looks six seconds is enough to develop this piece of film but I'll soon see okay that's enough stopping put it in the fixer these are just barbecue tongs that I use nice and cheap only cost about one pound fifty from the supermarket last ages okay into the fix I'll get it washed and dried 
So it's now been fixed. Give it a little wash. And we'll see what the best time is for making our contact print, or our print, I should say. So we've got three, six, nine, 12 and 15, obviously. Three, six, nine is too dark. Three, six, even six is too dark. So three seconds, I'm gonna go for four seconds. We'll do one for four seconds and see how that looks. The others with different exposures, so, uh, or different lighting, I would say. So I'll have to do the test on each one of them and see how they look. But here goes the first print that I'm making. Motion side down. Just try and place that on the paper where I want it because this is going to be the one that I want framed. That'll do nicely because I'm going to trim around it anyway. And I'll just give the glass one more rub over the area that I'm going to print with. And we said four seconds, so four seconds on the timer. One. And there's no contrast filters out either. I'm just using a standard light bulb in the enlarger. So I'm not using any contrast filters. Right, that's done. Let's see how that looks. And goes into the developer. And this should come out nice. If I need to do any dodging and burning, I can. There's no reason. The negative is big enough for me to um, dabble with. But hopefully not. It's looking okay, so I'll give that a couple of minutes in there, make sure all the blacks are soaked through, and then uh, stop and fix. And there it is there, it looks really nice. That was uh, four, five, what did I say? Four seconds, that was. Four seconds, nice little sweet contact print. So that's good for framing. The only thing is that little tiny light leak at the top, that's not gonna bother me. I could burn that in, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, I like that, it looks nice. I think I had a decent result going down shooting some 4x5 at the farm, something I haven't done before. I've got to apologise to any pilots that I, that I offended. If there's any pilots that watch the channel, you do a great job. You know you do. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think. If you're shooting 4x5, do you print contact prints? I don't know why. Also, let me know why that uh, Kodak film isn't available in 35mm or 120 format. Bit of a shame, really. I haven't got a clue why they... I don't know. Why, why wouldn't they put it out for people to buy? Um, let us know if you know the answer. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports the channel. And uh, I'll catch you next time.